Hey, welcome to Flight Test. My name is Josh, and this is Mr. Fat Shark. We're also called by Greg, right? Greg's fine. This is the founder and developer of Fat Shark Goggles. We've been blessed to travel all over France and Italy. Yes. And it, it's been a blast, but we've learned so much too. And one thing that's become really apparent is the evolution of FPV goggles. Um, brother, you started this off and goggles were just visual items that would beam the image down and nothing more, right? Well, when I started, there were, there were other video goggles on the market. Yeah. And uh, what I started doing was playing RC vehicles and stuff and try to put systems together. And But the reliability just, just wasn't there. It put a, transmitter together, headset, and you lose your signal. And I finally just figured out there's got to be a better way and started started playing around with it. Gotcha. Yeah. And how many years have you been doing this? It's going on six years now, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. during those six years, there's so many features because now that the radio links have become more reliable, video links have become more reliable, but also um, great features like head tracking and everything. There's a lot to get from a goggle nowadays. Back in the day, it used to be, like you said, you just got the image and that was it, maybe the sound. Um, but now you have uh, other features. Well, a lot of it to do is you have to be very adaptive. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of changes in the RC, in the RC world. Like when I first got into it, you know, 2.4 gigahertz was your was your uh, video link, and yes. everybody's using 72 megahertz. And next thing you know, the fight the 2.4 gigahertz radios came out, and basically you lost your whole AV link. So and that's why your earliest goggles actually were 2.4, and then 5.8 was was the other option, right? Right. In fact, you know, we we were fortunate that the 5.8 came out and we were able to. Uh, you know, adapt to the 2.4 gigahertz radios. You know, there's a lot of key features when someone looks for a goggle that you want to use, and uh, one thing is field of view. Can you explain what that is? Basically, it's uh, your, your your relative viewing angle. Yeah. Um, the higher your magnification, the, the larger the screen, and the more immersive the experience is. So, you know, if you're, if you're the kind of guy that really wants to feel like you're in the plane, obviously bigger is yeah. better. You want as wide as possible because also we fly with wide angle lenses and if you have a wide angle lens and a narrow field of view like a lot of the cinema goggles do, um, you lose a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, one of the trade-offs of course when you go to a larger field of view, you, know, you have to use higher magnifications, the optics get more difficult and uh, of course you also get uh, you know wider pixel, less pixel density which kind of distracts from your clarity. Uh, another thing that people are looking at too and uh, Immersion actually came out with the earliest version of this, uh, it was head tracking. And head tracking is basically where you look around, and that's come a long ways too now, hasn't it? Certainly, and that's actually what, you know how we immersion our scene. How Fat Shark started working together was was on the head tracking. Okay. You know, and I got them to start working on a system to. And that was originally just a simple gyro going left and right, correct? And and now it's immersed into what uh, gyros, uh, accelerometers, and magnetometers. Yeah, I mean with the you know with all the smartphones and electronics and stuff coming out, yeah, they've. You know, the advancement in uh, motion sensing that's yeah. available is just, you know, it's been incredible bonus to the FPV, FPV yeah. world. That, all, the, know, all the features that your phone has when you move it up yeah. and down and around. Allows and, us to fly quads, allows us to make great head tracking and exactly. you know, at low cost as well. Now you got something amazing in here. This is actually coming to the market very soon. What do you got here? This is the Dominator HD. Okay, so HD being high definition, right? Right. Okay. Um, I've caught a little bit of flack calling it the Dominator HD because it's not full HD, but okay. certainly higher than the VGA that we're currently selling. Okay. And the image is substantially clearer than the VGA. Gotcha. So. And, and one thing I immediately notice and stuff is when people fly, um, by the way, if you ever handle goggles, doesn't matter if it's your brand or any brand, never turn it towards the sunlight. That's the easiest way to hurt your goggles. And, and what do they call them, sunburn or something? Sunburn, basically the LCD works with a, uh, with, there's a three color filter. It's a micron thin. Okay. And you know, the same optics to give you the large FOV works in reverse to magnify the sunlight onto the uh, So it's LCD like a magnifying face. glass to your yeah, sensor. Yeah, it's like burning, your, like burning little ants. That's not yeah. good at all. Um, one thing I think is really amazing about the, the Dominator HDs, and, and actually this is on your Dominator version 2s too, people like recording their experience. Not everyone wants to put a GoPro in there, they just want to record their experience. And doing that, you can do that actually from a DVR, but DVRs usually have a conglomeration of wires, you have the DVR in your pocket, separate battery source. Uh, this is actually all included in one, isn't it? And it's done through just a little micro SD card, which is phenomenal. Uh, we've used this very heavily this trip. Right. And uh, that's one reason why I want to point out, it's amazing the value you get from this because especially with the uh, things like the Easy Telemetry or the Easy OSD, that gives you an audible signal that's traced over there. And God forbid you lose your planes, you can actually go back and play that and it gives you the telemetry and you can plug it into Google Earth through a free app and actually find your airplanes and trace your whole flight experience even to the point of view uh, through Google Earth. And, and that's amazing. Now you caught a couple trap doors, what are those things? Those are the module bays, like the existing Dominator on uh, V1, where we have our head tracking module bay. Okay. And we have our receiver bay. What this allows is it makes it a very flexible platform. Uh, a lot of people fly with base stations with external receivers. They don't use every all the features. They just okay. want a pair of video glasses to view. So this allows you to 
purchase that base unit and also with an upgrade path later should you want to add head tracking or and become more portable with your receivers. And the head tracking, this is actually something different. This is actually three axis gyro head tracking. Before it was just left and right, then it was left, right, up and down, right? And now it's three axis where you have full motion. So you can tilt your head, you can you can move any way we want, is that yeah. correct? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a nine degree of freedom IMU. And basically what that means is three axes for each magnetometer and accelerometer and the gyro. Okay. And the third axis was kind of incidental. They, there was a whole new paradigm of the algorithms used to track your motion. Before it was, you know, when a head track was two axes, you yeah. just measure the two axes and see what happens. This actually kind of predicts your vector, the vector that you're going to go go in. So it's, yeah. kind of, it's makes it extremely accurate. It's, it's kind of a past the thing. You don't, you know, it's nothing you can really put your finger on. Yeah. But when you get up there, you just notice that everything is so natural. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not locked on this pan tilt roll. It's, it's, it's whatever you do, yeah. the camera's doing as well. And you kind of forget that you're using a head tracker. It's that smooth. We did much earlier, um, back in uh, Columbus, Ohio, we did a head tracking mm -hmm. episode with a pair of Attitude uh, SDs. And it was amazing, but the one thing that we noticed and stuff, it was very, like, if you move too quickly, it would jump back to the middle. This has fixed all that. That, that advanced technology has definitely fixed all that, where if you go quickly, it follows your motions. It can tell what you're doing. It doesn't freak out. And you doesn't can't trip it up. You can't trip it up. And I think that's fantastic. Along with that, a lot of people are flying easy UHF and, and long range systems. Now that frees up that 2.4 gig uh, band again. And you can change out this module now. So if you're flying a long range system, you can go to 2.4, which gives you far better uh, yep. distance, doesn't it? So if you want to fly a little bit further, Use your UHF. And drop that in. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't suggest that. Uh, we were flying earlier with patch antennas for 5.8. They're nice and compact. I wouldn't suggest doing a 2.4 patch on your on your goggle. That's a little no, bit extreme. No, but a, a 2.4 uh, Omni uh, circular polarizer yeah. is absolutely lovely. And that, that can get you about what? Five kilometers, I guess. Five oh, kilometers. What it does, it just gives you so much freedom. You can fly around buildings. You can do, you know, invert it. it just, you That's don't amazing. get great. Yeah, it's, it's fun to fly with. Greg, I want to thank you so much, man, for uh, getting to travel with you, getting to know yeah. who you are. And guys, the the, uh, the road of FPV has been paved by a lot of people. This gentleman here has made tremendous uh, milestones for us with goggle development. I think you've done, what, about six different versions of goggles so far? Yep. And, and, and sure. you're not stopping anytime soon. I'm sure there's six more coming. That's fantastic. Friends, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. I want to thank uh, Emergent RC for bringing us out to another beautiful location. Uh, I'm going to butcher this. I think it's called Centiqua or Lake of Kings. Oh, that was uh, actually good. Was it good? Yeah. Did I get it? I think so. The first time in this whole trip. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a dip because half the guys are already in the water, <laughs> including that gentleman too. Before we do, Josh, I'd just like to say yeah. thanks for having me on your show. It's been long overdue. Man, it's a pleasure, no. brother. I look yeah. forward to working with you more in the yeah, future. Yeah, I'm sure you will. All right, you have your swim trunks on and I have mine. I'm ready to go. Let's take a dip. See you. All right, see ya.